feel a lot has changed in the public debate in Germany when it comes to gender and also racism. Like I think these things go hand in hand, like discrimination and how people are accepted um, has changed significantly and um, people are like in, in, in the public radio, I've been more and more hearing and also on the main public TV stations, people saying but this is an opinion of an old white man, which is something that would have not happened, like I would even say four years ago. And people are like, um, and there's more and more women, also older women that say like, I don't want to be treated like this anymore. And I'm quite surprised of like how, especially like established female politicians who you would think have like been so involved in the system of oppression themselves that they wouldn't want to talk about it or don't consider it a problem but more and more of them are coming out as well um, to say like you are a man and you are prejudiced towards me and um, I'm really quite happy about that which doesn't mean that everything's good. The exhibition that I curated, um, the topic was very wide and not very specific and the topic was queer art. So like the first question that you can ask there is what is queer art? Is there such a thing as queer art? And um, we defined that in a way that if the artwork comes from a queer perspective, like somebody who questions heteronormativity, who questions gender norms, who questions the role of a certain gender in society, that's what we consider queer art. Um, and so that makes it also really interesting as an exhibition as a whole, because there are so many different aspects of gender and um, sexuality that you can see, because even if we all consider ourselves queer or what we do queer, um, what that means to every single person is still very, very different. Well, I'm quite lucky because I only started dealing with visual arts in the last two, three years. Um, and I've organized a queer exhibition which was like explicitly queer. And therefore, wherever I went and whatever I did, um, there wasn't really any challenges or discriminations at place. I come from music originally and I started DJing and working at a record shop. And so like that's definitely something where I felt very unseen or I was always the special one, like the only woman. Um, when I first started working at a record shop, like people would come in and not see me at all. Like, and if I had a male friend visiting, they would just go and automatically talk to him um, and ask him where like, the records were that they were listening to. I try to keep a very strict schedule, which is not always working, of like actually closing my computer at six and not looking at it again and answering all my emails on Friday so that I don't have to worry about anything over the weekend. And um, like I've been, like after I finished university, I've been working in NGOs, so like it's, um, or I've been self-employed. So in all of these things, um, it's very difficult to have a, um, clear cut between what is your personal interest. And then I'm volunteering for an NGO Half, half the time of my like work day basically and so it's very difficult to say well this is my free time but also it's not really my free time. Um, I try to go out to nature as much as possible. I have two dogs which make me go outside for at least an hour every day so that's like a forced break from computers from work um, every day, which I can only recommend if you have the time and the place. Mm -hmm.